Hello. The topic that we would like to now discuss is the use of pulmonary ultrasound with a particular focus on how point of care ultrasound can be useful for the assessment of pleural fluid, as well as with the evaluation of how pulmonary ultrasound can help identify the location of that effusion uh, and help uh, facilitate perhaps a thorough synthesis procedure. So let's talk about a case about uh, that I think would highlight the potential utility of perioperative providers learning uh, the quick assessment of pulmonary ultrasound with the idea of looking for pleural effusion. This patient was a 40-year-old scheduled for an AV fistula revision. Uh, reported last dialysis was two days prior. Uh, was had a O2 requirement of two liters. Uh, was sitting upright. Had a chest X-ray uh, done that day. Should have demonstrated here, indicating some potential area of loss of costophrenic margins and mild signs of pulmonary congestion, um, but uh, the case proceeded. When the patient uh, choice of LMA was, was obtained for this patient, um, however, after the LMA was placed, the patient had a saturation of uh, roughly around 80, high 88 uh, to low 90s percentage, despite being 100% via the LMA. We then did a uh, uh, point of care exam, and I'd like to highlight the fact that this, this chest x-ray shown here was with the patient sitting upright. Doing a chest x-ray um, in the supine position demonstrated a picture like this showing a very large pleural effusion that had layered out and was undetected from the upright chest x-ray. So again, showing the importance of evaluating patient position and the impact of that position, uh, and as well as the underappreciation from standard routine chest x-ray of the magnitude of one's pleural effusion. Had we done an ultrasound exam on that patient, we would have been able to identify a picture similar to this, where we see a fluid collection area uh, between the, the diaphragm and lung parenchyma. So this large hypochoic space is in fact the patient's pleural effusion. Because of the fact that this examination requires uh, deeper penetration to the body, a lower frequency probe, such as the cardiac phased array, or the curved linear probe, will be ideal. The linear probe, because of the fact that uh, approximately after 8 to 10 centimeters of depth penetration, we are not able to insinuate um, a quality image, uh, is not the preferred probe for being able to quantify one's pleural effusion. So using use of the lower frequency probes is ideal. And again, remember the concept that as frequency uh, and depth of penetration are in fact inversely related. So how do we obtain this picture? Well, the key thing is to use the low, lower frequency probe in the patient's dependent areas of their chest wall. So if they're able to sit up, placing the probe on their posterior aspect at the base of their chest wall will allow us to be able to get an approximation of their effusion. Again, the indicator should be similar to how we have the probe for the pulmonary exam for pneumothoraces with the indicator aiming uh, at the 12 o'clock position to get a vertical cross section of the lung fields with, again, the probe sitting in between the rib spaces. And what this allows us to do in this position is to identify the area of effusion. And really, and we'll demonstrate this on the hands-on demo, about how we manipulate the probe to go up and down to identify where the lung parenchyma is and where the effusion starts. What ultrasound allows us to do is to helpfully identify the appropriate location for uh, someone if they need to undergo a thorough synthesis procedure, uh, identify the location of the uh, uh, pleural effusion and allow for greater uh, access to the main area of where the effusion is the, is the largest. A quick rule of thumb when it comes to the evaluation of pleural effusion is that the distance, measuring the distance between the lung and the posterior ch chest wall at the base um, is one way of evaluating for the uh, degree or volume of effusion. Uh, traditionally, a greater than 5 centimeters has been shown to, to predict more than 500 mLs of pleural fluid uh, being in that space. In the supine patient, you want to have your probe uh, at the base of the lung fields in a manner similar to this, the posterior axillary line following the last true rib down to that posterior axillary line to again insinuate the base of the patient's lung fields. 
And again, very important to remember this crude marker of uh, five centimeters can reliably predict at least 500 mLs of pleural fluid. Two positions, the recumbent and upright positions, with the key focus of the ultrasound probe being in the dependent area of the patient's chest wall. There are specific calculations that you can do to evaluate more precisely the patient's volume. Here, this picture demonstrates one research article that showed uh, how you can estimate the volume by doing 16 times the diameter between the costophrenic recess and uh, the liver um, to identify the degree of uh, the patient's uh, or the magnitude of the patient's pleural effusion. You see atelectatic collapse along here. So now I'll demonstrate on our mannequin how to obtain this view. All right, so now we're going to go into the point of ultrasound exam uh, for the evaluation of pleural effusion. The key thing about this is that you want to have your ultrasound plane in the dependent area of the lung field. So if your patient is in the supine position, you want to place the uh, area that's most dependent in the lung uh, space. Where that usually approximates to be is it followed the last true rib down to the anterior axillary or mid-axillary line, and we're looking for the diaphragm uh, and lung interface. So here in this cartoon, you'll be able to see the yellow, the greenish yellow area is a pleural effusion, showing the separation between diaphragm below on the left side of the screen and the lung as we go higher up into the space. And this is a patient with a relatively large pleural effusion here. So now we have gone into the lung parenchyma, shown here. And as I move, as I slide my ultrasound probe further back down to that dependent area, you'll see that we get involved in that pleural effusion as well. And I uh, please go back onto the PowerPoint to talk to evaluate for the measurements that you would do at this level to evaluate and determine the amount of volume in this space. But again, the idea with this is to have the ultrasound plane in the most dependent area of the lung fields.